Hello YouTube, it's me, Jolta, back at again with another video. So, The Owl House, huh? I've mentioned before how much I love this show. I made a whole video where I went through all the covens, ranked them, yada yada, go check that out. But I have barely seen any Iceberg videos about it. And that really sucks to me, because I freaking love Iceberg videos. So I figured, why don't I take all the Owl House Icebergs online, scrounge them up into one, and make a video about them. In case you don't know what an iceberg video is, it's basically going from top to bottom of an iceberg image. This typically would go from the most well-known stuff to the least well-known stuff. Sometimes there's joke entries, yada yada. This one's about the house. A few things before we get into the actual iceberg. For one, obviously there will be spoilers. The show has been done for... how long has it been actually? Oh shit, over a year? Jesus Christ. Oh, if you haven't actually watched The Owl House yet, I highly recommend you do so, both before you watch this and in general. Something I should also mention, each point there will be a different glyph shown, and this will be to shed a bit of light. So, a light glyph means that it is fully confirmed, something in the show. Ice glyph will be its fan work or something related to the fan base, like theories, comics, etc. A plant glyph will mean that it is something that is unconfirmed or skeptical. And finally, a fire glyph means it is deconfirmed or just generally not true. About a few points were removed simply because the icebergs were created before the show ended, so some points of speculation were then confirmed public knowledge for anyone to watch the show. One last little thing. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe. Alright, tier 1, Dana Terrace. Dana Terrace is the creator of the show, Ships. So several of the icebergs had different ship names as separate entries, so I just put them all into one here. Every single ship, from canon, practically canon, to Jesus Christ what is wrong with you, has a name, as ships do. The most popular ones being ones acknowledged in the show or hinted at, like Raider for Rain and Eda, Huntlow for Hunter and Willow, and of course, Lumity. In fact, Lumity was referenced in the show during Season 3, Episode 1. In a montage, Luz makes a small presentation to come out to her mother, and the slideshow is being labeled Lumity Studios. Connecticut. The main character, Luz Noceda, lives in Connecticut. And, you no, know, just this small fact was so popular that they made Connecticut real. Chibi Tiny Tales. So, Chibi Tiny Tales is a short show. As the name suggests, it's Tiny Tales with all their characters chibi provide. And of course, this would include the Owl House. Notable shorts are Luz and Amity going on a date, the first official crossover with Amphibia, more on that later, and an actual episode episode. As in, from what I can tell, most of the episodes are like, something happens and then that gets interrupted by small tales. Where Luz appears and talks to various characters from Phineas and Ferb, which super surreal for me by the way. Phineas and Ferb is an amazing show that I watched when I was younger. The Savage Ages. The Savage A- Blech. The Savage Ages were described numerous times in the show as a very chaotic time filled with wild magic. But in Season 2, Episode 12, we actually go back in time alongside Luz and Lilith, and it is great. <laughs> it's essentially the same, obviously less technology advanced, and without Bellows in charge. Because right now, he's just a guy looking for a round boy. God, that actually sounds very bad when you don't know the context of it. Hunter needs therapy. Yeah. So Hunter, he's a, I want to call him a writer's punching bag, but Hunter goes through a lot of crap. So Hunter needs therapy just became a common phrase because it's highly accurate. He does need therapy. Lego Eater. Oh God. So Lego Eater is a very popular image and GIF, etc. in the community. It was created in a comic that mocked how characters' hands were drawn in a specific scene, and the hands looked like Lego hands. So, Lego Eater happened. 
and people just loved it. Nowadays you'll find a 3D model of Lady Eater that Fortnite dances in front of the outhouse. Yeah, this is just happening in the show. Alador Rat. So in Season 2, Episode 20, I didn't write this specific episode down, just remembering. Yes. In Season 2, Episode 20, while the gang are trying to get into Aldo's labs to get caught by Adalia, we see a rat that looks exactly like Alador. According to Dana, this rat was just a reference to a joke where Aldo did a pose from Ratatouille. Later decided that this random rat was a palisman. People first watching the episode thought that Odalia turned him into a rat, which is just funny. Giraffes. In the world of the outhouse, it's stated that giraffes are demons, and they were banished to the human realm a fairly long time ago, being a bunch of freaks. We actually see what giraffes look like, and um... Tomato Amity. Amity, when they get flustered or very upset, has their whole face go red, and this combined with her green dyed hair that goes up, kind of makes it look like a tomato. Hence the nickname Tomato Amity. Similarities to Amphibia. Now, full disclosure, I haven't watched Amphibia, but I haven't really been driven to watch Amphibia at all, being perfectly honest. But even I know that there are a lot of similarities between the two. I can't get into a lot of detail about it, again, haven't seen it. Essentially, the young girl gets easy to a fantasy world on a Disney show, a Larry that turns into serious drama and zoos. They've even been, like, branded as sister shows, and makes sense, they were created near the same time by the same company, and the people that work on both shows are friends, and have collaborated a few times. LGBTQ plus representation. This is one of the most notable t things about the show, even given a small nickname sometimes the Gay Witch Show. A lot of main characters are either confirmed or heavily implied to be LGBTQIA+. To go over a few examples, Luce, the main character, is bisexual and in a relationship with Amity, who is lesbian. Rain is non-binary, Willow has two fathers who really love each other, and the other characters, while not directly seen in the show, have been confirmed, such as Lilith, who is Arrow Ace, and several more. Season 3, Cancellation, and Hashtag Save the Outhouse. Disney was going to stop the show in its tracks due to it not fitting their audience of 7+. A lot of people do believe that this was from the show having LGBTQ plus representation, which does not go well with several places in the world who have completely outlawed that. Dana has stated otherwise, but I don't remember exactly what they said. After a while and a petition, hashtag save the outhouse, Disney decided to give it three specials, which is comprising the entire third season. That is so crushing. Hootie's kill count. Hootie has killed in the show and he will kill again. There's four that we know of. Only one of them is moving. Rest assured, there's very likely more. Bellos and Gus are Sans. The Odalia homophobia scene. So, the Odalia homophobia scene is another scene from season 2 episode 20, near the end. Where Odalia expresses that she does not want Amity to date Luz. If you just take that out of context, you're going to quickly believe that it's because Odalia is homophobic. But homophobia doesn't exist in the Bowling Isles. Odalia isn't actually being homophobic in the scene, as right after they say, We'll find you a new girlfriend, one that's not on wanted posters. So her issue is that Luce is a criminal, which is way more valid. Look, she may be egotistical, greedy, a horrible person, a horrible mother, uh, and pretty much scum, but they're not homophobic. Alphibia. Alphibia is the combined fandom of both the Outhouse and Amphibia. These fandoms are so intertwined, they fuse into one. In show jabs at Disney. So the second half of season 2, or season 2B, was created 
Oscar sees the decision for the show to end abruptly. As such, they can take a jab when once in a while. The most prominent being Luther's line in Season 2, Episode 19. Clearly, 20 more adventures would have been the length of Season 3 had Disney not been a bunch of assholes. The betas. There is, weirdly enough, a fair amount we know from the betas of the outhouse. The original was going to take place in HE Double Hockey Sticks and was changed to the magic world we know today. And the series, based on the art and limited information that we do have, looked to be a lot darker than the show. So this probably would have been more along the lines of an original Teen Titans. Morning Mark. Morning Mark is a comic artist that is very well known for their Owl House comics, which really do replicate the show style both in humour and visually. They still do comics based on the show and I recommend them. Ida is Grunkle Stan's ex-wife. So, Ida the Owl Lady. They show up to the human realm every so often, take some trinkets, then go back to sell them. But, th what if in the human realm she met someone there, specifically Grunkle Stan from Gravity Falls? A very popular theory, though still unconfirmed, is that the ex Stan talks about in a DVD commentary relates to Ida. His description of a girl with clearly fake hair, a golden tooth, and when I robbed him half an hour after marrying them, which definitely fits Edith's personality and physical description, heavily relates to Edith being Grunkle Stan's ex-wife. This was further pushed in Season 2 Episode 10 of The Owl House, where Ida has used the name Marilyn, which just so happens to be the name of Stan's ex-wife. Secret Codes So, the secret code refer to a long code using the first letter of each title per season. For season one, it's a witch loses a true way, likely relating to Lilith. For season two, it's seek the key, fear the lock. A lot more vague, but you definitely understand it if you've seen the show. The final season does not use the first three letters, but instead the, the first word of each being thanks for watching. Which is reproduced asexually. Which is reproducing is obviously not explored during the show, but people have questions. <laughs> the theory is that they reproduce asexually, which I suppose could explain characters like Gus only having one biological parent, at least one that we know of being his father. Or uh, could be asexually, but using magic to make it still have the genes. So like, I suppose magic. Artificial insemination, maybe? We don't have an answer, and I don't think we're gonna get one. King is Bill Cipher reincarnated. Going back to Grouty Falls, when the King of Demons first showed up in the Owl House, bearing a voice very similar to one triangle overlord of all time and space and chaos, Owl House fans believe that King could be a reincarnation of Bill. As in the finale of Gravity Falls, Bill is defeated, but invokes the name of the powerful Axolotl to be reincarnated at a different place in a different time. Obviously, Alex Hirsch being the voice for both is where this came from. As now we know more about King, we can pretty confidently say that their own thing, but we also can't know. He could be Bill reincarnated. We never know. Reality Check Summer Camp is a reference to conversion camps. Okay. So, Reality Check Summer Camp is a place that's said to normalize people and personality. We never see this camp, but the only bits and pieces we know are that V went there in place of Luz alongside Marsha and the two other guys that are there. Seeing the residents of this camp, if this really was a conversion camp of sorts, I don't think it worked. Lilith was still manipulated by Bellos even after season 1. Emperor Bellos is pretty well known for their ability to manipulate, but I don't think this is possible. The only thing you think you could say is that Lilith after season 1 clearly had a thing for authority. As for Bellos still manipulating Lilith, no. A common pattern in the show is that 
as soon as someone, even the most loyal to him, like Hunter, Lilith, and even Kikimura, knows what Belos is like, they're against him. Just disassociate. Which Azura is real? The Good Witch Azura is a fictional series that Lewis and Amity really love. My guess is that people thought Azura was a real witch and that these stories were based on her, which I suppose could be the case, but nothing really points to it. Both Lewis and Amity addressed it as a fictional series. Maybe this would be a witch lost the time, like some people believe that the Good Witch Azura is what happens when Luz and Amity have a kid and then time travel. It's a whole thing. But we have no evidence that Azura is a real witch. Creepy Luz. Creepy Luz was the name given to V when we just saw small snippets of them. Obviously once Season 2 Episode 10 came out, everyone loves V. They're a fan favorite. Magic is amplified by positive emotions. Magic comes from the heart. Not in a my friends I'm a magic sort of way, this isn't fairy tale, but more that there's a sack of magic attached to the heart. Now, emotions do certainly have an effect on magic. Ida and Lewis curses get worse when they feel stressed, angry, etc. As do just King and Ida when they feel immense anger seeing Luz die. But there isn't a definitive thing I've seen where positive emotions make magic stronger. That could very well be the case, I'm not sure. Amity is Dana's self-insert. People believe that Amity was a self-insert of Dana Terrace. Amity's Palisman has the same name and appearance of Dana's pet cat. Dana has disproven this and deconfirmed it. Bellows is Luz's father. No, this was a theory made early season 1 because people were either joking around or saw the most obvious twist. The main character only has a mom and the main bad guy is an adult man. Clearly, the main bad guy is protagonist's mom. <laughs> Fuck, I'm leaving that in. Uh, <laughs> this has been vastly deconfirmed. Witches can flap their ears. Okay, this sounds stupid, but witches can actually droop their ears down. I guess if they wanted, they could maybe flap their ears. I don't see any point in doing that. Flapjack tattoos. During the ending montage, every member of the Hex Squad, bar I think, but I can't tell, has a tattoo of Flapjack on their body. Luz and Willow have it near the top of their left arm. Amity is also on the left arm closer to the wrist. Gus has it on the bottom of the left leg. And Hunter has it on his right arm, replacing where the Emperor's Coven sigil was. And I can also guarantee that a fair amount of Owl House fans have that same tattoo somewhere on their body. King and Eater's Monster Forms as stated before, during the finale, after Luz dies, the immense anger causes both King and Ida to go into transformation of sorts. I don't know how this happened, but it's very cool. And that was Tier 1. Catch you next time for Tier 2.